A microwave plummets on a car and breaks its hood. It almost seemed like someone had evened their score with the car owner. Detective Mayhul immediately reaches the crime scene to investigate. He interrogates three people living in the building. Samantha says, I just came home. Why would I destroy Michael's car? I'm his girlfriend. Tom says, The house I live in belongs to Michael. I live here by rent. Even my hand is fractured. How could I pull this off? Michael says, It was a new car. I just bought it a month ago. But it's okay. I have insurance so I'm not worried. Mayhul instantly figures out who did the deed. Can you guess? Comment your answer below. Let's check out the answer. If Tom's hand is fractured, how was he using the same hand to have breakfast and drink coffee? Look at the fork he was using and the coffee mug, both are kept on the right hand side. Mayhul notices this and arrests him in a jiffy. Let's jump to the next puzzle. Jason calls Detective Mayhul to inform him that his wife Sana has committed suicide. Detective Mayhul reaches the crime scene. He examines the whole scene carefully. Jason then tells him that an argument took place between him and Sanat the previous day. Sanat immediately took out a bottle of poisonous pills from the drawer, ate them, and died. Detective Mayhul takes the bottle of poison and sends it to the lab for test. Lab in charge tells Detective Mayhul that there are only Sanat's fingerprints on the bottle of the poison, and the bottle contains same pills that Sanat has consumed, but it is not a suicide, but a murder. Why did the lab in charge think that it was a murder? Can you tell? Look at Sana's fingerprints carefully. Can you solve this suicide or murder mystery? Think about it and comment down your answer below. Here's the answer. If you look carefully, Sana's fingerprints are only on the bottle and not on the cap. So how did Sana open the bottle? Clearly, Jason gave his wife's fingerprints on the bottle after his wife's death, but he forgot to give the fingerprints on the cap, due to which the lab in charge found out that it was a murder and Detective Mayhul caught Jason immediately. Let's hop on to the next one. Lily had been wanting a car for years, but her husband Peter always had an excuse. Lily asked Peter again on New Year's Eve. Get me a new car right away. Peter said. Okay. Tell me which car do you want? Lily said. I want a red colored sports car. I'll only get you a car if you can solve this puzzle. All right? Lily said. Sure, go ahead. Cut this thread in half and be careful that the ball must not drop and that you must not touch it. Is that it? Keep the money set aside for the car and it will be easy. And Lily gets her car. How? How did Lily figure out the solution? How was the thread cut in half by her? Can you think of the answer? Tell us your answer in the comment section. Come on, let's take a look at the answer. Lily tied a knot first and then she cut it in this manner. So she cut the thread from the middle and the ball did not fall. Jim's car breaks down at the gas station, but he needs to reach his office at the earliest. He decides to take a lift. He comes across three cars but is unable to figure out which driver to ask help. Can you help him? Let us know your answer in the comments section. Let's check out the answer. Look at the images closely, which show that the man in car B is a criminal and car A had been stolen, which means that it is probably being driven by a criminal too. Hence, Jim should reach out to the man in car C. Let's hop on to the next puzzle. Peter's school teacher was very sly. One fine day, an external teacher pays a surprise visit and decides to quiz the students. But the external was unaware of the teacher's plans. The external teacher asked a question and all the students raised their hands. The school teacher picked out a student who gave the right answer. The external teacher asked a question again, and yet again, all students raised their hands together. The school teacher again picked out a student who gave the right answer. The external was quite impressed of the school teacher and her teaching methods. On every question the external asked, each and every student in the classroom raised their hand, even if they didn't know the answer. But why? 
How could this be possible? Think and let us know in the comments below. Let's now check out the answer. The teacher had instructed the students to raise their left hand if they knew an answer, and raise their right hand if they did not. The teacher always picked the student with their left hand raised, and therefore managed to trick the external teacher. Isn't that a great idea? Let's move to the next puzzle. What if there was a thunderstorm outside? And as you were leaving, you crossed the bus stop and saw three people. Your best friend comes in first followed by an elderly woman and then your long-desired dream girl. But only one person can sit in your car at a time. So whom would you choose? Think carefully and wisely. Let's have a look at the answer. Confusing situation, right? There will be a fight, if you don't give your best friend a ride. You can't even say goodbye to your dream girl in such a way. And if the elderly woman isn't provided a lift, it won't be morally right. Then you have only one option left. Give your best friend the keys to your car, an elderly woman will sit next to him. Whereas, you happily wait for the bus with your dream girl. In the city, there's an opening for electric vehicles. Ted and Tim visit the showroom to see the cars. Ted then gets into the car for a test drive. Suddenly, the lights go off. Everyone starts panicking. After some time, when the light returns, everyone is shocked to see that Ted has been murdered. Inspector Pal was also present in the showroom at that time. He immediately rushes to the crime scene. Pal questions three people who were near the crime spot. Tim claims, I was talking to the loan lenders on the side. I'm completely clueless. According to the manager, I told Ted sir about the car's EMI and pricing, and then began seeing other customers. The mechanic says, I told Ted sir about the petrol tank, and the efficiency of the car, and then he left. Inspector Pal soon realizes who must have committed the murder after hearing them. How, can you guess? Let's look at the answer. Because the showroom was of an electric car, how could the mechanic discuss the petrol tank? Inspector Pal catches him right away. Let us move on to the next riddle. After COVID and its worldwide lockdown, Lily was elated to finally be able to visit the theater. Little did she know that this visit was going to be fatal. Everyone was shocked to learn that she had been murdered in the restroom. Detective Mayhul happens to be in the same multiplex, so he rushes to the crime scene. When he sees the CCTV footage, he realizes that Lily met three people there. He summons all three of them for introspection right away. I was Lily's college friend. Rohan explains. I actually met her after a long time. So, we exchanged pleasantries and I left. Pam says. Sir, I don't know her. I just helped her because she couldn't find the movie screen. Then we went to the restroom together. When I left, she was still inside. Emily says. Sir, I don't know her either. She just asked me what time it was, and I told her. Then, I met her back in the washroom, but we didn't speak. Mayhul immediately realizes who must have committed the murder after hearing them and seeing the crime scene. How? Can you think about it and tell me? Let's see what happens. Lily was wearing a watch. So why would she go to Emily to ask about the time? This means Emily is lying. Detective Mayhul caught her right away. Let's now move to the next riddle. It was raining cats and dogs that horrific night in Paris. The city that shines bright with the lights of the Eiffel Tower had completely blacked out. Nothing was visible till a distance. Dina was terrified upon seeing the situation as she just brought a lot of gold and cash from the bank locker. She enters her room to check the contents of the bag and discovers that everything has been stolen. She immediately dials Inspector Gag's number and calls him at home. Dina then informs Gag that only three people were aware of the jewelry. Gag questions all three of them. George states, There was no electricity. 
So, I went to bed. You can check my house's CCTV footage. I spent the entire time sleeping. Ren states, I have a young child. He was terrified because there was no electricity. I was narrating his stories to keep him distracted. Tim states, Because there was no electricity, I read a book with a candle and fell asleep. In fact, your call woke me up. Gag listens to all three and quickly deduces who committed the theft. How? How does Gag figure out who committed the robbery? Two people are lying. If you answered one, take a moment to reconsider. Let us now examine your answer. George and Tim are both lying. George knew that nothing could have been recorded on the CCTV, as there was no electricity. And Tim says that he slept, but then the candle should have burnt out in three hours. However, the candle remains the same. That means he's also lying. Both are arrested by Inspector Gag. Let's now proceed to the next riddle. Look at this picture carefully. Who do you think is the mother of the child? Think properly and let me know your answer in the comments. The child seems very young, which means he has definitely been accompanied by someone. Notice a fresh garland kept in front of the third grave. This means that she is the kid's mother.